Hello everyone. In this video, we will be taking a look at three phase half wave control rectifier with R load. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram of a three phase half wave control rectifier with R load. If you carefully observe, there are three thyristors T1 connected to phase A, T2 connected to phase B, and T3 connected to phase C. And all of them are connected to a resistive load that's connected between the load point and the neutral. Now, at the first place, why three phase control rectifiers are required? They are fundamentally used because it can handle three times the power compared to that of a single phase control rectifier, isn't it? Since it can handle more power, we popularly use these type of circuits in industrial applications. And that's why three phase control rectifier are required. Now let's take a look at the, the analysis of how the circuit operates. So let us consider the source voltage waveforms that is Vs. So phase A is indicated by red, phase B is indicated by yellow, and phase C is indicated by blue. So all of them are phase shifted by 120 degrees. So A exactly starts at zero, B exactly starts at 120, and C exactly starts at 240. Now we are going to analyze the output voltage waveform in three different cases. That is when alpha is equal to zero, what happens? When alpha is less than 30, and when alpha is greater than 30, what happens? So one important point that we have to remember here is when we say alpha is equal to zero, that means it will start at this point. This point meaning to say that it, it will start exactly at 30 degrees. So why we are considering 30 degrees? 30 degrees is the minimum angle beyond which we will be able to fire the thyristor. Meaning to say, if we are trying to trigger the thyristor T1 at less than 30 degrees, then what will happen is the other two thyristor will reverse bias the thyristor T1. As a result, you will not be able to control this particular thyristor. So the minimum firing angle required to control thyristor T1 is it should start from 30 degrees. So 30 degrees is the minimum firing angle that you have to start with. So don't confuse this 30 degree with the alpha value. So when we say alpha is equal to zero, that means it's going to start at 30 degree before which we will not be having any control over this particular circuit. I hope this point is clear. Now let us extrapolate uh, the signals on how we are going to draw the waveform. So when we say alpha is equal to zero, it's going to start at this point. So when it's going to start at this point, that is the supply voltage A is maximum positive and we are going to trigger thyristor TA at this point, that is alpha is equal to zero degrees. So anode is connected to the positive of the supply and cathode is connected to the negative of the supply. As a result, what will happen? T1 will be forward biased and acts as short circuit. And whatever we are supplying, that is VA, will be appearing at the low terminals, isn't it? So the output voltage here will be equal to VA. So what will happen is at alpha is equal to zero with respect to phase A, since T1 is conducting, the output voltage waveform will exactly follow the source voltage waveform because this is just a switch, isn't it? As a result, whatever you're supplying will be appearing at this point till this instant. At this instant, what we will be doing is we are going to trigger thyristor T2. And if you carefully observe, thyristor T2, that is phase B, is more positive compared to that of all the other phases. As a result, when we are triggering T2, what will happen? T2 will be forward biased and all the other thyristors will be turned off in that case. So what will be appearing across the load terminals is nothing but VB. So whatever is the source voltage waveform will be followed in this particular case. And till when it continues, it continues till we are going to trigger with respect to phase C that is at alpha is equal to zero. That is at 270 degrees for phase C. What happens at this crossover point? C will be having maximum positive voltage and we are going to fire the thyristor as well. So T3 will be forward biased and T2 and T1 will be reversed biased. As a result, whatever is applied through VC will be appearing across the load terminal. So it will exactly follow the phase C voltage waveform. And this cycle repeats. So we'll be extrapolating this little waveform in the beginning as well as in the end. So this is the output voltage waveform for alpha is equal to zero. So if you carefully observe, this is just acting like a uncontrolled rectifier. Basically, you don't have any 
sort of control over this particular circuit because alpha is equal to zero. As it is starting at alpha is equal to zero, this is an operation of sim something similar to an uncontrolled rectifier circuit. Now what happens when alpha is less than 30 degrees? So let us say alpha is equal to approximately 28 degrees. So when I say alpha is equal to 28 degrees, you have to add 30 plus 28, that is 58 degrees in this case. So when alpha is approximately 58 degrees at this point, if you consider what will happen, again, VA is more positive compared to that of VB and VC. As a result, we are triggering T1 and T1 anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative. T1 is forward biased. So from this point, it will rapidly go to the following the waveform of the source voltage. So again, it will follow the source voltage waveform up to this point. Up to this point is because you're not triggering thyristor T2 at this instant. Previously, we were triggering thyristor T2. As a result, it was following the source voltage waveform. Till this instant, we are not triggering thyristor T2. So it's following the source voltage waveform and it's not going to zero. If you carefully observe, it is slightly closer to zero, but it is not zero. The reason why we need to observe this, whether it's closer to zero or not closer to zero is because if it is going to zero, then it is discontinuous mode. Since it's not going to zero, we call this as continuous mode. So when alpha is less than 30, it is called as continuous mode. Now at this instant, what happens? Again, we will be triggering thyristor that is T2. That is VB is more positive compared to that of VA and VB. And we are also firing T2. Important point is even if it is becoming more positive compared to the other phases, we have to trigger that thyristor. Otherwise, it will not conduct and it will be open circuited. Basically, it will be in forward blocking mode. So at this point, we are triggering thyristor T2. So again, it will start following the phase voltage waveform of B. So it's exactly going to follow the phase voltage waveform until and un unless we trigger thyristor T3. That is again, we are going to trigger thyristor at alpha is equal to 28 degree for phase C. So at this point, what will happen? It will exactly follow the phase C waveform in this particular case. And the cycle repeats. So we call this mode as continuous conduction mode. Very, very important point. This is called as continuous conduction mode, CCM. Because the output voltage is not going to zero, we are seeing this as continuous conduction mode. Now, what happens when alpha is greater than 30 degrees? So for example, let us say we are going to trigger all the thyristors exactly at 60 degrees. So let us consider alpha to be equal to 60 degrees. If you say alpha is 60 degrees, it is nothing but 30 plus 60, that is at 90 degrees, isn't it? So when we are triggering exactly at 90 degree, what will happen? Again, phase A is more positive compared to that of B and C. And we are also providing a firing pulse to thyristor T1. As a result, it will start following the phase A voltage waveform in this particular fashion. It will follow till this point. If you carefully observe beyond 180 degree, right? Beyond 180 degree, we don't see a firing pulse for thyristor T2 and the phase voltage A is going in the negative direction. That is, it's going in the negative direction as in it is reverse biasing thyristor T1. So as a result, the output voltage will go to zero from this point till the instant where we are going to trigger thyristor T2. Thyristor T2 again will be triggered at 60, alpha is equal to 60 degree, meaning to say at this point, again, it follows the voltage, the phase voltage of phase B in this particular fashion, till which point? Till it goes to this instant. That is at 300 degrees, if you carefully observe, it will go in the negative direction over here. So when the supply itself is going in the negative direction, what will happen? Even if you provide a gate pulse, it will not conduct because you're reverse biasing the thyristor T2, isn't it? As a result, the output voltage will be zero. It will be zero till which point? Till we trigger thyristor T3. So when are we going to trigger thyristor T3? That is alpha is equal to 60 degree. This, this is pretty much consistent with all the phases. So when alpha is equal to 60 degree for phase C, that is at approximately 330 degrees for phase C, what will happen? It will exactly follow the phase C voltage waveform until which point? Till 420 degree, 
it will be having this point and at this point it will go to zero that is because phase c is going in the negative direction that is it is reverse biasing thyristor t3 as a result it is going to zero and again as thyristor t1 is triggered it will follow the same nature so we are going to extrapolate something similar in the front and the last portion of the waveform so now what is this mode called as this mode is called as discontinuous conduction mode very very important observation because the output voltage is going to zero beyond a point where even if you fire the particular thyristor you are not able to achieve any amount of output voltage at this point so this is called as discontinuous conduction mode so we have three different modes here when alpha is equal to zero it will just act as a uncontrolled rectifier when alpha is less than 30 it will act as continuous conduction mode when alpha is greater than 30 greater than or equal to 30 it will operate in discontinuous conduction mode so this is how you need to analyze how a three phase half wave control rectifier behaves with an r load i hope this point is clear in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned thank you